Peace and blessings, family. Peace and blessings. Mark, the messenger, we're back with another video. This one's going to be about seven signs of a religious spirit and how to discern one. So you got to understand that there are way more religious spirits than people who are chosen ones, people who are actually denying themselves daily and picking up the cross and following Christ. These religious spirits, they're going to be used to uh, persecute the chosen ones, to attack, to criticize the character, assassinate, etc., etc. So this is how you dis detect and discern between a religious spirit. A lot of people, they think they have the Holy Spirit, but it's really a religious spirit. It's such a huge exception. So we got to cling on closer to the Father and have the Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us so we could see the things for what they are in this world, okay? So here are the seven signs of a religious spirit. Number one, the number one sign of a religious spirit is that they hate to be corrected by the word, okay? So whenever God's convicting you, okay? Because remember, not everyone follows Christ. Some people could say they, some people think they do because they go to church or they follow a couple of people on YouTube, and they think they just follow Christ, but are they actually living it in real life? Are they actually really about that life? A lot of people ain't really about that life. Are they really being obedient? Are they keeping God's commandments? Do they love God with their heart? Or do they just love God with their lips and their mouth? That's many people who profess to be Christians, okay? So one thing about a religious spirit or a Pharisee, they hate to be corrected by the word, okay? For let's say for instance, right? I made a video a couple months ago talking about what God showed me about once saved, always saved, and how it's not true. And how, you know, the Bible says that without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Uh, even Christ said himself that, you know, you either repent or perish. You know, list goes list goes on, right? So that's what God showed me about these religious man-made doctrines, right? And one thing I noticed is that once you start to tell people what God has been showing you, you're going to get attacked. Because that's what happens when you speak the truth. You're going to get hated on, persecuted, and get attacked. So one thing about a religious spirit, okay, these people who don't have, are not walking in the spirit of truth, okay, they hate to be corrected by the word. The word, it, the Bible says a word is a sword, okay? It pierces through the hearts and souls, okay? And that's what happens when you're speaking truth. Like people get really, really offended, especially these Pharisees who are full of self-righteousness, arrogancy, pride, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one thing you're, you're dealing with a religious spirit is that they hate to be corrected by the word. They already made up in their mind that they're following the truth without, even though, you know, because one thing about all of us, myself included, that we all have to re, uh, unlearn and relearn, okay? We all have to humble ourselves and uh, uh, understand that, you know, we were once deceived. We, we once believed in a lie. Uh, we once were of darkness, and but because of the, uh, our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, we're now walking in the light. And there's some things that we have to unlearn and relearn and we have to study to show our, our, our self approve you know, yes, you can learn from other people, but most importantly, make sure that you're really spending the time in the word so you won't be deceived. So that's one thing about a religious spirit. They hate to be corrected by the word. Okay, number two is one thing about a religious spirit. I'm sure a lot of you guys dealt with this type of spirit before, or maybe this was with yourself. Okay, so it thinks uh, of themselves to be better than a sinner. Okay, they trust in their own self-righteousness. Okay, so they think themselves that they're better than other people, maybe because they're in a season or they're spiritually strong, um, you know, maybe they're like isolated and so they're not, you know, prone to like, you know, falling short. But the Bible says all has fallen short of the glory of God. Now, I know there's some people who use that verse to stay in sin, to, to be disobedient. You know, now us chosen ones, when we when we, we say we all fall short of the glory of God, it's because it keeps us humble. That doesn't mean that we're going to willfully sin or be disobedient. It just means that we know that if we're humble everyone's time comes when we fall short and because we're humble god's the us with extra grace because the bible says that god gives grace to the humble but he rejects the proud so the people who are religious the religious spirits who are self-righteousness who are trusting in their own works okay who thinks they're themselves better of the sinner better than someone who's disobedient right um best believe that that's the sign of religious spirit and this is one of my favorite parables that christ spoke in the bible this is in luke chapter 18 verse 9 to 14 it says and he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others two men went up to the temple to pray the one a pharisee and the other a, a publican the pharisee stood and prayed thus himself check out check out what he says he says god i thank thee that i'm not as other men are extraordinators unjust adulterers or even as his publican okay the publican was a sinner the uh, the pharisees was self-righteous he trusted in his own righteousness he trusted in his own works okay and the Pharisee said, I fast twice a week. I give all I give uh, titles of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off, the publican was a sinner, right? And he, so the publican standing far off would not lift up his eyes into heaven, but smote his, his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. 
And this is what Christ says. Christ says that I tell you that this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that ex exalt himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. Okay, so the Pharisees will be humbled by God, and the one who who knows that he's you know tr uh, struggling in the flesh, you know you know struggling with sin, but he's humble himself and says, you know, God have mercy upon me, I'm a sinner. He received more grace than the, than the Pharisee who was fasting twice a week. Who was giving to the homeless, you know, giving titles or, you know, helping out ministers, um, you know, who wasn't living in willful sin. The sinner received more grace. That's very eye opening. OK, so we all must be humble. Pharisees, the relig religious spirits are not humble. They condemn other people and they feel like they're tr and they trust in their own righteousness. That is a sign of a Pharisee. OK, so number three is outward. They appear holy, right? They appear on the outward. They appear holy. They appear righteous, right? To get notice. And to get others to follow, okay? And in but inwardly they're hypocrites, okay? So outwardly, you know, they might have the fringes on, they might have some Jesus teachers, you know, they, they appear on the outward to be, you know, very beautiful, right? But in the inside, Christ says they're full of uncleanness and dead man's bones and bodies, okay? It also says that in Matthew chapter six, verse five. It says that, and when thou hast praised, be not as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of other men. Verily, verily, I say unto you, they have the reward. So the Pharisees, they, they wanted to appear righteous to other men so they could receive praise, okay, which I'm going to go over in number seven. Okay, so that's the number one sign. You, you see a lot of people praying in public, but the Bible says over and over again, you're not supposed to do that, okay? You don't practice your righteousness to be seen by other men. You want to practice your righteousness to worship God, to praise God. Not to say, oh, so this person can see me as righteous. Oh, you know, you could be praised. That's another sign of religious spirit. They want praise of man more than they want praise of God. Okay, so the outward, the Bible says in the outward that they're very beautiful, but in the inside they're full of uh, uncleanness and dead man's bones. Wow. Okay, number four. This is deep. This is deep. Number four sign of a religious spirit. It misleads many into the broad uh, uh, way, which leads into destruction. We know what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse uh, 13 to 14. There's two roads. There's one that leads to destruction, and there's one that leads to eternal life. And only few find the, the narrow gate, which leads to eternal life. So this is in Matthew chapter 23. Uh, this is Matthew chapter 23, verse 13. It says, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For neither go ye into yourself, neither suffer ye them that enter to go in. So the Pharisees, they're on the broad path that leads to destruction. And it's just like a crab in a bucket. Whenever a crab starts to ascend and level up, there's always going to be that one crab to tear you back down. And that's what these religious spirits are going to do to you, chosen ones. I'm telling you, it's all part of the assimilation. Remember, Christ's enemies were these people. Okay, so you being a chosen one. Who are your enemies going to be too? Yes, you're going to have enemies of your own household. Yes, it could be people of the world who would be enemies, but also people of these churches, these people who who look just like you, who have the same belief system in you, you know, Christians. It's also going to be them too. So you got to be, that's why this, this video is going to be very powerful so you can discern between these people. Okay, so one thing that you'll notice, right? And and, and people, let me know in the comment section below if you, if you experience this, right? Let's say God has, has been teaching you, remember, because God is our ultimate teacher. Yes, he does use men. To teach, uh, you know, to teach brothers and sisters, right? But God's your ultimate teacher. The Holy Spirit teaches you all things, right? So the, when the Holy Spirit is letting you know, you got to be obedient, right? Okay, let's start keeping these commandments. Uh, let's let's just live a life of repentance. Uh, you know, let's let's be obedient. You're gonna have these Pharisees, these religious spirits. Okay, they're gonna try to condemn you for your obedience. Check this out. It says, it says, what would you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for they for they shut up the kingdom of uh, of heaven against men. For they don't even go into the kingdom of God, and they don't suffer them to, to enter the kingdom of God themselves either. So when you're on, the, when you're about to enter that kingdom, these religious spir uh, spirits are going to try to shut the door for you because they're not going in themselves. It's like a crab in a bucket. Okay, so always keep that in mind, man. Whenever you you try to be obedient, when the spirit of truth is leading you to truth, more truth and more truth, you got to expect these people to come against you. Okay, number five is a religious spirit upholds the traditions of man. Over the word, okay. So I made multiple videos about you know the, the customs of the, the traditions of man, you know, what the world practices like you know Christmas, Halloween, uh, Easter, you know, the pagan holidays, all the tradition of man, okay. In the Bible, this is what Christ says about what the religious spirits did, okay. So this is Mark chapter seven, verse uh, five to eight. It says, Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the traditions of the elders? 
but eat bread of the unwashed hands. And Christ answered and said unto them, Well, has Isaiah prophesied of you, hypocrites, as it is written, This people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How about in vain do they worship me, teaching for the doctrines and commandments of men? Not the commandments of God, but the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold to traditions of men, as washing of pots and cups, as many others such like ye things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandments of God, the Ten Commandments of God, that ye may hold, keep hold of your own traditions. Okay, so wow, that's what people don't want to give up these pagan holidays, these traditions of men. Okay, and it's all it's all to fit in. It's all what it is to fit in because once you start to keep God's commandments, you start to notice that you, you're set apart. You're truly holy. You're truly set apart. And these, you know, these world, worldly, you know, the false holy ones, okay, they're going to come against you. The false ones they, who appear holy on the outside, they pray in public, they pray on a YouTube video, they have, you know, a fair, beautiful speech, but in the inside, they're full of uncleanness and dead man's bones, which means they're spiritually dead, okay? So you got to understand, they're going to uphold the traditions of man over the world. You guys ever notice that you stop celebrating Halloween, you stop celebrating Christmas, Easter, and all these other pagan holidays, right? And they're gonna they're gonna outcast you. They're gonna condemn you. They're gonna cast stones at you. All because God has showed you the truth, and you you really want to be holy. You really want to be about that life. You really want to be set apart. You don't want to be of this world. They're gonna come and attack you because that's what's all part of the simulation. It's all part of the matrix. Okay. And just best believe when you're getting attacked for your obedience, Satan is mad. God is happy, and Satan is mad. Number six. Ooh, <laughs> looks for faults in others. Besides themselves, don't we know a few of these people? They look for, they, they literally like spend hours of their day, weeks, hours, months, looking at faults in someone. And they, and they see, they could see, wow, this person's being used by God, but they're going to look for one flaw. They're going to look for one, one bad thing about you because they did the same thing to Christ. They try to look for one bad thing, a man without sin. And they still have something negative to say. They still have. So what are they going to do to you, chosen ones? What are they going to do? They're going to do the same thing too. That's what the Pharisees did to Christ. These religious spirits did to Christ. These religious spirits are going to do the same thing to you. They're going to look for all types of faults in you. Okay? Besides themselves. Okay? Because Christ says that to take out the, the speck in your own eye. He called them hypocrites. Now, some people use that verse. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 to 4. says, um, Judge ye not, lest ye be judged. Uh, and it's pretty much talking about judging hypocritically. So let's say you're judging someone for, let's say maybe he struggles with like pornography, but you're doing it behind closed doors too. Maybe he might be doing it every day. You might be doing it once a week. That's hypocritical because you're doing the same thing too. Okay, so one thing about these religious spirits, they're going to look for flaws and faults in you. They'll reject all the good things you're doing. But they're going to try to find out one small thing and demonize you and criticize you. There's nothing wrong with being criticized, but these people will literally take that one. They'll, they'll reject the, all the good works you're doing. And that one small thing, demons, man, demons and devils. That's what Christ called these Pharisees, demons and devils, serpents, okay? That's what they're going to do. So keep your eyes open. And once, these, once you start to deal with these type of spirits, you have understanding. So you're not going to entertain it. You're going keep, to keep on walking straight and narrow. Number seven. Is there convenience, right? Love to be praised hangs in high places. Okay, Matthew, oh, sorry, Luke chapter 16, verse 14. It reads, it says, And the Pharisees also, who were convenious, heard of all these things, and they derided him. He, and he said unto them, Ye which are justified yourself before man, but God knows your hearts. For he that is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of in the sight of God. Okay, so it's an abomination to be praised by man. But these Pharisees, they love to be praised by man. In Matthew chapter twenty three, verse five to six says, "But all their works they do to be seen of man. They make broad their um, their clothes and enlarge their garments, enlarge the borders of their garments, and love the utter, uttermost rooms at feasts." And the chief seats in the, in the synagogues, okay? So they like the high places. They like to be seen. They like that power and authority, okay? It wasn't because they were humble about it. Because you think, of, think about it. Christ had all the power on the earth. God, you know, he was a son of God. He could have been doing like them. But what was he doing? He was washing people's feet, okay? He was coming to serve people. He was feeding people. He wasn't He wasn't trying to be the top dog. And we're seeing that a lot, right? I'm, I'm seeing that a lot. I can't speak for anyone's, but I'm seeing that a lot where people want to be the top dog. No one want to, wants to work as teens. No one wants to wash the people's feet. No one wants to serve. Everyone wants to just be the leader. 
No one wants to be, you know, no one wants to start from the bottom and then work their way up. People just want to be that top dog and they get jealous and envious of those who God has anointed to be the leader. That's what we're seeing, especially with these religious spirits. So these are the seven signs you're dealing with a religious spirit and seven signs how to discern from one. Guys, I could go over 20 signs. But these are seven signs. I hope you guys enjoyed and got edified from this video. If you made this far, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. And this really helped you guys a lot. Share this video on all social media platforms. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.